race car spelled backwards is still race car. Welcome to the race car spelled backwards podcast. Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Brad and with me as always is Jamie and this is the race car spelled backwards podcast. We're coming from you from the Darn Barn studio hot off a Kurt Busch victory at Kansas. Damn. It's a good race, man. I can't believe none of us called him to win. I know. It's like we've picked him just about, between me or you, we've pretty much picked Kurt to win. Well, he was crashing so the much the last races. couple races, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking. I mean, well, last week we said, look, he did the same. He rolled his eyes just like he did the week before. I, I can tell you what. We stopped picking him and he wins. We stopped picking Chase. He won. Good I'm going to start picking Joey Logano every single weekend. Because <laughs> if we pick him I, I and they wreck. I can't go there. If he wrecks, I will gladly pick him. If that's what it takes to get him out of the race early every week, I will sacrifice one of my picks. Yeah. You know, eventually, he'll be a dark horse. I mean, as bad as he ran at Kansas, he's pretty much a dark horse. Yeah, as much as I dislike the man, we need him so we can hate him. Yeah, that's a fact. Same with, mm-hmm. same with Kyle. Yep. Bush. Truck race, that was a good race. Saw Zane Smith go out there and dominate, not just win it, but he dominated, leading 108 of 134 laps. This is Zane's third win of the season and his sixth in his career. It's a pretty good race. I actually really enjoyed the truck race. No, that was a... Actually, did you watch ARCA? It was good all the way through. The ARCA... Menards. I, I didn't watch that. I was actually, at, I had a wedding to go to Saturday, so we got home right around the same time the truck race was getting ready to start, so I didn't miss any of the truck race, but I did miss the ARCA race, and for some reason, my TV didn't record it, so. The funny thing with that, Venturi, Vin, what's his name, Venturi? Venturi. Venturini. Venturini. Was it Greg Venturini? I don't know. I don't know. Well, we'll call him Mr. Yeah, the owner. Right. Yeah, so Drew Dollar wrecks his driver. So they go to interview him, and he says, you know, Drew Dollar races for you. He wrecks your equipment. He can go race for Kyle Busch, and he'll still wreck, bleep, 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 your equipment. <laughs> I saw somebody on Twitter posted something that said, Drew Dollar, super nice guy. Drew Dollar, super bad race car driver. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. I mean, he sucks. Can't I- keep his equipment clean. I hate it for him. But the truck what race was an amazing race, and of course Sunday. Yeah, I even throw a shout out to um, the production team for Fox Sports One on um, Saturday night for the Truck Series race. Their camera shots were much better than the other previous races this season. Like for example, the leaders got strung out running single file. Nothing's going on. Fox decides to move the cameras to 16th place for a mid-race where they're racing, you know, in the middle of the pack and showed the 88 and the number one car racing. And it was a really good race for, you know, five or 10 laps, but it was racing, side-by-side racing. So instead of showing single file, nothing, they found some racing and showed it. And I greatly appreciate that. It's entertaining. Yeah, and you know, um, I need to do a little research. They brought their cameraman, Turtle. <laughs> I saw that. And, you know, Turtle, I'm really into turtles. I like the Ninja Turtles. Does that count? Terrapins. It's the Ninja Turtles, not Ninja. Well, they're Terrapins, too. Yeah, but I've never heard them say the Ninja Terrapins. Well, that's because, you know, they, they got to please the, their audience. <laughs> And, you know, it takes a lot to be a turtle these days. Well, I'm was, just going to say it again. Go, Maryland's Women's Lacrosse. Right. Hey. That's all we got. That's all you got. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Fox, what about Jamie Mack in the booth Sunday? Well, he was good. He really was. Jamie and Mike Joy really go very good together. Like, the conversation is... It's like they're having a conversation and you at home as the viewer is part of that conversation and you're not fighting to get into that conversation like Clint. It's kind of well, like- Clint like got Tourette's. I think he was <laughs> jealous of 
Jamie Mack and just started blurting stuff like, Try on turn two! I think that's, that's, Clint is, like last season, we didn't see this with Clint because Clint was comfortable with Jeff Gordon and Mike Joy. Clint's comfortable. Like, if it's just Clint and Mike in the booth, it's, Clint's not like that. You throw anybody else in there, it just it's different for Clint, and he doesn't have time to adapt to it during the race broadcast. But he was very funny with Danica. That's I mean, because Danica wasn't overpowering. Like she didn't have anything to add. He was definitely say. better with Gordon. He was. Yeah, because Gordon, I think Gordon and Mike were able to corral Clint and keep him part of the conversation and not so off the rails where Jamie coming up in the booth throws him off. But, you know, we called this on an earlier episode when we were talking about how the booth does better with three people in it. We've said it. Fox has the talent on their roster, and I'm glad to see them using it. I mean, they broke broke out Larry Mack, Jamie Mack finally. Now all we need them to do is put Jamie Little in the booth. I would dare say that Jamie Mack did – is good or if not better than Dale Jr. And I go to that far. Man, that's a stretch, man. Come on. I'm a big Dale Jr. fan, but I'm telling you, it was lost your mind. I don't know. I don't know. We'll call it 50 50. Jamie is just good in front of the camera because he does it every day. He's, and so is Dale. Yeah. And so is Larry. And so is Mike. They've all, I think they have more camera experience than Clint. But don't you think that for whatever reason, Dale Jr. didn't threaten Clint? Clint sounded like he had Tourette's this I thought race he did. in Kansas. Yeah, but he didn't do that with, with Dale Jr. in the booth. It was kind of a back and forth with him. But I think their friendship probably helps with that too. So maybe Clint and Jamie don't hang out. But isn't – he's from Kansas and Jamie McMurray or Mac Murray is what I would call him. He's from Missouri, which is right next to Kansas. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, you maybe think maybe rivalry. Missouri people don't like maybe Kansas they, people? Maybe there's a Boyer-McMurray feud. Back on from dirt like tracks? 1803, we don't know about. It could be. You never know. Hmm. Makes sense. <laughs> well, here's something else that makes sense to me after I did the math, and our listeners will know that I am phenomenal with numbers. We both are, actually. Yeah, when we talk English, you make sure to tell us you're no good with math. That's amazing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. So I was looking, and we always talk about a top 20 finish, but really, if you don't finish in the top 18, you finish in the back half of the field since we have 36 cars. So instead of calling it the top 20, be proud you got a top 20 finish. Now they should say you got to be proud you got a top 18th place finish. Or 15. I mean, let's just cut it to 15. It's easier. Aren't you kind of trash if you're not top 15? I don't know. I mean, I mean, really. If you look at where they finished this week, I think you got some good guys that finished outside of the top 15. I mean, I had Kurt. We had some surprises within the top 15, though. Well, look, top five, you had Denny Hamlin finishing fourth. Christopher Bell finishing fifth. How about Toyota showing up, man? That's like, what do you think they did differently? Just get on the same page and help each other? I, I mean, I really didn't see where they were working together, but... No, I think Toyota has a, a package that's better built for a mile-and-a-half track and a super speedway track than they do for a short track, and I would think that's probably smart on their part because the majority of our races are on those kind of tracks. We don't have a lot of short tracks, so... But it's nice to see him show up. But look, I mean, Christopher Bell, that's a good run for him. Ross Chastain, no shocker there. He's in the top 10, finishing seventh. Um, Truex finished sixth. That's a really good run for him. I mean, it's just nice to see the Toyotas put a full package together and finish the race. Ryan Blaney kind of shocked me. He finished 12th. But for just a small, what, was it, what do you think, two laps. Maybe a lap. He dove down led for about 100 yards, and just disappeared. You have zero Fords in the top 10. You know, you well, got, we know Chevy helped develop the car. Yeah, and I mean, Toyota works good together. I think Ford is lacking in numbers or strength. They have two powerhouse teams, and that's it. And one of those teams is in a rebuilding year, being 
Brad. You know, like a Brad. I mean, what's up with Brad? It's his equipment. Yeah, it's got to be. Because he's always done great. I Kevin don't... Harvick rounds out the top 15, finishing fourth. Um, I don't know, man. It's I think Ford's got a long way to go. Chevy's definitely showed back up. Again, not a shocker, but it's you know now they got some competition. I mean, if you look at it right now, it's Chevy's going to win the short tracks, the majority of them. Chevy's going to be tough to beat on road courses. Toyota's decent on road courses, and Toyota's really good on mile and a half. So Ford's going to have to really step their game up at Penske and um, RFK. So I'd like to talk about Corey LaJoy. <laughs> 19th. That's the back He's half 19th, of the field, back and I know if you field. listen to Stacking Pennies, back he'll tell you how crappy his cars are, and he's you know with a second-rate team. But I'm starting to watch him and pay attention to him. He might be onto something. What, finishing in the back? No, I think he might oh, finish top 10 with a better team. I think he would too, because I think Corey LaJoy is out driving his equipment right now. Corey LaJoy out drives his Spire equipment, but he's loyal to Spire. So as long as Spire treats him right, he'll stay with him. I, I don't know. I'd like to see LaJoy be the second car at college, maybe, or even the third car at Trackhouse. I mean, house. we saw Dingleberry. <laughs> you know, Mr. Lamborghini. <laughs> he was given a chance in the 21 car. Well, we're, Harrison Burton has to have somewhere to go for the 21 to open back up. So, Well, he, he drives a 21 and he finished 21. I think Corey's where he needs to be until a better ride opens up. He's out driving his equipment, so when a better ride is available, he'll be able to go in and get it. Well, I think Burton... Was brought up too quick. I agree. But if you think about it, Corey LaJoy could be your next Kurt Busch. If he's in the right equipment. Well, he's out driving the equipment he's in. So yeah. if he can get, catch a break and get in some really good equipment like a Penske, a track house, a Colic, Colic a Hendrick, RCR. Yeah, even RCR. If he can catch a break. He could turn it around, but he's got a. I like his personality, so he's like a. He's not crazy like Kurt was in the younger years, but. No, nah, he's he seems like a decent guy. He's got a chip on his shoulder for being on second-rate equipment, and you know that's why I stopped listening to his podcast. I got tired of hearing about it, but I also have been paying more attention to him, and he's not wrong. He's right. He's in second-rate equipment. Fact. Kurt Busch goes out in dominating fashion, which it seems like the trend for winning at Kansas this weekend. Kurt led 116 laps. He won stage two, and he won his first race for 2311 in the Michael Jordan GOAT paint scheme, which is cool. But even cooler is Kurt just won for his fifth different team, his fourth different manufacturer, and his 19th season with a victory. I love watching Kurt win, man. Kurt is so cool. He's become a gentleman. I just think he's, I mean, he's a diplomat for NASCAR. He's, he's, a, he's just a cool 40 year old, you know? But he's, if you, you know, back in the day, if you watch him, he lost his shit oh, over he, stupid stuff. Kurt was a dick back in the day. There's no doubt about he it. He was Kyle. <laughs> he might have been worse than Kyle. <laughs> well, he didn't he More have vulgar. to go to send? Well, he's done. I think his vocabulary. He's gone to a sports psychologist, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. I think he's even admitted it. He's probably went to a regular psychologist after that. His ex wife nice was crazy. She said she was like CIA or something. But then they all of a sudden dropped the charges against him for wife or whatever, girlfriend yeah. abuse. Oh, yeah. And this kind of found out she was crazy. She really was in the CIA. Or she was crazy, whatever she was. But it, it was really cool to see Kurt win. I like listening to Kurt's interviews. It, I do not like Denny Hamlin. I'm not a fan of, I'm not a Denny Hamlin fan. Let's, let me rephrase that. Don't it, want anything bad to happen to him, but he's. Yeah, I, I don't know him personally, but as a driver, I'm not a fan. But it was still cool to see him get emotional over Kurt's win. You know, Bubba Wallace had a, a phenomenal day. His pit crew did everything they could to try to ruin that day. But he even came back and finished 10th. Denny Hamlin finished 4th. I mean, it was, Denny got emotional, though, when Kurt pulled in on pit road. He was emotional. 
Kyle Busch come up and congratulate his brother at the car. I mean, all that, it was just a, I don't know, it had that family aspect to it. And I, I like seeing that. I like the Well, then there was plenty of other drivers congratulating him. Oh, yeah. And yeah. team members of other teams coming out. And, yeah, I mean, it kind of reminded me JGR, of... JGR, or you had um, Christopher Bell congratulate. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of when Senior won the 500. Like It was definitely a very popular win. There's no doubt about that. I mean, you know, Kurt even said he he's like he thanked his brother. He's like, you know, thanks to Kyle for all the help he's given me with this Joe Gibbs alliance we have. It was the best feel good win in a while. Yeah. Oh, that's that I guess that was what I was getting at. It was a feel good win. And I think it not just for us as fans, but the NASCAR industry in, its, in itself, it was a feel good win for as a whole. I yeah. mean, he, for what? the drivers, I think drivers enjoyed seeing that win. Yeah. You know what else Kurt proved? That you can win a damn race without wrecking somebody to win the race. Yeah, he was even accused of it. Yeah, Cliff Clark. Daniel come over the radio and is like, looks like Kurt put us in the wall, Kyle. Kyle said, nope. <laughs> Lars is like, nope, he didn't do that. And Kyle was excited for the win. He goes, man, that was awesome racing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When they interviewed Larson, he's like, dude, that was so much fun racing Kurt. Uh-huh. Larson just likes racing. He's proven that in sprint cars. He's proven that in late models. And he's proven it last Midgets, season, this season. Whatever. Anything you could put him Four in. Four wheels that. and a steering wheel. Exactly. I, you could throw him in a grocery buggy and push him down the road, and he would be competitive. Oh, he'd, he'd race against the Boy Scouts on their soapbox derbies and probably win. Guaranteed. I mean, he, the dude is phenomenal. A phenomenal driver, but he was excited. He wasn't Joey Logano pissed He was off. a fan. What Kurt, at the end of the race? Look, essentially, what happened to Kurt? He he went up the track. Larson got pinched off. Basically, Kurt didn't hit him. No, he you got could see close. in the replay there was a little bit close. of light between the cars. But Larson got loose, or Larson just got in the wall. I can imagine if a car was coming up on me, I'd probably be tight on that wall too. So, and you were racing for the win. But what's what's the difference between that and what happened last weekend with William and Joey? I mean, William, the outcome was different. Yeah, but you you saw Kurt had crappy pit stops. Yeah, his team didn't help him. He, as a driver, and the car as it was brought to the track, dominated. Kurt knew he was going to win, and he knew he could win fairly. He could race Larson to win. I guess Where's, that's what I'm getting at. Joey is. doesn't trust his equipment or himself. Defend it to me, in my opinion. Kansas had a better finish, even though it wasn't a last lap pass or a second, two laps to go pass or coming to the white flag pass like you had at Darlington. I thought this week's finish was better than last week's. Oh, yeah. Because this week they raced. Last week, Joey Logano wrecked a guy so he could guarantee himself. But Joey win. had a chance to have the same story if he would have raced differently. Because Joey was going to win whether he yeah. wrecked him or not. It, he, had, he had made up a lot of ground, so he was going to win that race. There was no way William could have blocked him. And if William would have blocked him, then put him in the wall. I'm good with that. That's racing. I man. don't think he had to put him in the wall regardless. I think he I think had he the car to win. I think he could have went low and passed him. Yeah. So, But it, Kurt proved to us you don't have to do that. And they ra- Kurt raced hard all day. Kurt and his brother racing hard. Kurt and Denny racing hard. I saw him racing Reddick. I saw him and, heck, him and Larson. I had notes, man. So have we were. 64 laps to go. Race is awesome. Watching the 5 and 45 bounce off each other and 5 bounce off the wall is amazing. That's notes I had. I had notes from stage one about Kurt racing hard. Well, from what you said last week about Joey being a douche canoe. <laughs> So Kirk was not a douche canoe, not a DC. Correct. He's not a DC. Where Joey Logano dropped the LB. He is a DC. A number two LB. He is a LB with a DC. Yep. (laughs) He is an acronym. Got the Larry Award (laughs) and the douche canoe award. Larson bouncing off the wall was freaking crazy, man. But he bounced the whole race off the wall. Yeah, I think he hit the wall like five or six times. One of, so Cliff Daniels, during an interview during the race, he told Fox that the reason Larson kept hitting the wall 
was because the only line Larson was fast in was the top line, where like the 45 could run on the bottom, the middle, and the top. And if they got and they got loose, if you watched those guys run, they were getting loose everywhere. I mean, it, this car just shoots out from under you. It's it's fun to watch these guys drive a hard driving car. It's not like they're on slot cars anymore. In my imagination, after you know, Larson says, "Man, that was a great race. It was awesome racing Kurt like that." You know, he's from California. My imagination, he's like running to the wall, going, "Dude, this is so awesome." <laughs> as a fan and you know you appreciate that you know he's not just a driver he's a fan i could see larson going up to kurt after the race and having a beer with him maybe shotgunning a beer with kurt and like you know yeah. that was fun mm -hmm. that's, and i think that's what people like about larson i mean i know i like that about larson like he's larson, a pure racer he could have been pissed at kyle putting him in the wall i mean kurt pushing him into the wall. But Kurt didn't put him in the wall. Kurt just squeezed him off. Larson probably could have held on to it, but it was going to be, you're talking inches. So, but Larson, it didn't ruin Larson's day. He still finished second. I have no problem with it. I thought it was phenomenal racing. I mean, all day you had good racing. I mean. But that's exactly what happened when the 24 Moved up on the 22, and Joey said he put me to the wall. It was the exact same scenario. I mean, the 24 did touch Joey's car, but I think he was squeezing them off. It's racing. That's all. To me, it was racing. Like, TJ Major said it on Door Bumper Clear. What Joey did, chicken shit move. I have to agree with TJ. Well, I'm not TJ even going to say what. TJ grew a set, and. And Joey doubled exactly down on that crap in an interview. Oh, I know. Oh, he wants to race. I'll race harder. Yeah, that's what he said. If he wants to hit me again to get even, I'll put him in the wall even harder. Yeah, they because it was him and Bob Pockers were talking about it. And Bob asked him, and Joey's like, yeah, well, if he thinks he wants to pay me back, then I'll hit him even harder next time. And I, there's been no evidence that he's threatened to retaliate. Actually, he passed him smoothly. Yesterday and, in Kansas. And drove away from uh, him. Basically said, smell my fart, you yeah. turd. Hang, I did, just, hang the, just hang the bird out the window and roll on. Uh-huh. I thought it, Kansas was phenomenal racing. I mean, we saw three or four different lanes being fast at different times during the race. Four wide all the time. Dude, bravo to NASCAR. This car. They saved a mile and a half. Now we're going to find out next week at the All-Star Race how good, if the car is... The car's good right now. It makes for great rest, racing, but Texas sucks. Kansas sucked until this race. Texas really sucks. It's hard, too, because can't, Texas used to be a good track. Then they did that whole repave where the different banking. Bump, and then they had a bump they wanted to smooth out. Yeah, well, now you got a lower, you got different banking in the corners. Turn one and two is different than three and four. I just... It hasn't been good since then, so we'll see, man. We'll, we'll see what happens. But this this car puts on a great, great race at one-and-a-half-mile track. I can't wait to see it at Charlotte. Oh, I can't either. The 600 is going to be phenomenal. We'll be there. Yeah, it's at, press, credentialed press people. Yeah. We'll be, I don't think that's the proper term. Media members is what I've been rolling with. Members of the media. I've been saying credentialed press. I'm just excited. Oh, yeah, I'm... <laughs> I can't believe it still. Yeah. I, I'll be standing there and not quite believing it. That's a fact. But I think that's going to be a good race, too, because, I mean, yesterday at Kansas, we saw veterans, champions of the sport, getting sideways, touching the wall. I mean, it's, it's fun to watch drivers like Larson and Kyle Busch drive a car out of control because they're, those are the two guys who can drive an out-of-control car in control. They can have a they can have control of an out of control car. Did we? Uh, I forget the term. I don't think we had a single incident where the control arm broke, or what do they call it? Yeah, what um, Junior was talking about. Yeah. I guess I we saw flat tires cause some issues, it but used, it used to be a track bar, and now it's that control arm. Each each wheel has an individual bar. Yeah, or whatever. yeah I know what you're talking about. 
people listening probably know what it's called. Tweet us, tell us what it's called. I have no idea at the moment what it's called. But you could email me, but I haven't given you e- my email address. So tweet it. Well, I mean, no, we didn't. Cause Cause I that, but nobody hit the wall hard like that either. No. Toe link. Toe link, that's Man. it. A freaking toe link. Now you don't have to tweet us. Yeah, so, but nobody hit the wall like that. They were hitting the wall, like, so at Darlington, they were hitting their wall with their right front. At Kansas, they were getting loose, and they would tap it with the right rear, and it would basically straighten them back out, which well, is phenomenal to watch. So, I've worked on some front ends. I've got a ball joint tool. Can, why can't they fix that toe link in pit, in the pit stop, pit box? Well, usually when the toe link breaks, that whole front end's crushed in, so I doubt it's just that easy of a fix. What they need is the toe link not to break and then just beat out the car with a hammer like they used to or cut it up with a saw to make it last just to finish the race. That toe link breaks, they're done. Maybe they need to kick it back to old school where you hear like uh, David Pearson pulled into the garage coasting, they switch engines, he got back out there and won the race. Yeah, Let them make some repairs in the garage. Those days, those days aren't going to happen because those days were probably not that entertaining. When you're three, I don't know. My grandfather thought it was, but we've read statistics on yeah. 50s and 60 races, and someone won by 23 laps. You're like, oh, my God. I'm going to sit there. Part of the byproduct of these cars getting into the wall because they're loose, yes, the car can take a little bit of a beating as far as the body goes, but yesterday, Tyler Reddick got into the wall, and some of the graphics off the vinyl that cover the wall peeled off and got on the front of his car and basically ruined his race. Oh, I thought those were like three dirty diapers some mother just <laughs> pitched off over the fence. It looked like dirty diapers. These th- these graphics should never be a storyline. The wall painting, it should be a painting. If he rubs the paint, paint flakes are not going to clog up the front of that grill ruining his race. But vinyl graphic sheeting will. So... This should never, we shouldn't, we should never be having this conversation. This is a conversation we but could But we've avoid. never had it before. So is yeah, it, it just a one-off or no, do you think it's going to constantly happen? It's happened quite a few times, actually. It's just, it it basically ruined Reddick's day and he made a point to talk about it. I've, I've seen it happen a handful of times, but I've never really, I guess it's just never, we didn't have a podcast to discuss it. How about, that's probably more accurate, but it shouldn't happen, man. It's ridiculous. We're we're having a conversation. Tyler Reddick's trying to make it into the playoffs by winning a race. He's gonna he's gonna win one. Well, not if the damn graphics keep taking him out. So what happens if we have seventeen winners? It's winners points, and one person's left yeah. out. Yeah, if you're not, it'll be whoever's highest in the points. So, I mean, we have a lot of eighteenth and twenty position points guys that have got wins right now. So, how about Ricky Stenhouse? Finished eighth yesterday. I think he might win one this year. Wait. He stopped crashing. What happened? They fixed his toe link Wait, or his hammer toe, whatever it's called. Maybe <laughs> maybe he just got tired of people calling him Recky Spinhouse. I mean, he, even other drivers were calling him Recky Spinhouse. So who takes that title now? No, no. We're not going to say it this episode. <laughs> he finished, though. Yeah, he didn't wreck. This is two weeks in a row he has not been a storyline. We're, we're talking about the wall graphics coming off because he didn't wreck. That's awesome. I'm going to go talk to him. Uh, if, he, if he runs good, and if he doesn't cause an accident at Texas, I'm going to congratulate him on the last three weeks. Think he'll punch us in the face? That'll be even better if he does. That'll be a great That's story. That's true, line. but... You get decked by Cody. <laughs> That'll be awesome. I mean, I'll he, get it on video. He catches so much grief from other podcasters, too, not just us. Oh, I'm DBC. I can't say bad things about him if I can't congratulate him for finishing the race. No doubt. Like I said, because I mean, it's not fair otherwise. No, I'm proud of Cody. Did I mean, his dad tell him to stop? I'm, I've got to form a question where I don't get punched. Cody finished. 30, or you'll see my fat ass running with, <laughs> with Cody. We're chasing me. Cody finished 34th. 
ahead of Justin Haley and BJ McLeod. So congratulations, Cody Ware, on finishing 34th. You didn't cause an accident. And he finished. And you finished. Very congratulations. It's an that. improvement. That's a huge. That's all you want to see is someone constantly improve. You know what else has improved this year? Goodyear. Yeah, they yeah. have. The tires now have fall off. The first handful of races this year, we had fall. We didn't have fall. Off. They could finish a whole race on a set of tires. Now it only we lasted fall twenty off. laps with Kansas. Dude, I'm okay with that. So I don't know that we agree on this. I like the fact they only last twenty laps. Because you have to save your tires. You have to run different lines to make your tire last longer. I like watching a driver save tires. And then 25 laps into a run, you see one guy pulling away because he saved his tires. It's a gray area for me. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was very fun to watch. I enjoyed the strategy. Granted, I like the strategy part. It was legit. Every 20, 25 laps, we had a tire go down. I mean, I mean, what I really liked about Kansas, first, I'm going to say, it was a great race. It was a great race. We didn't have any, like, brutal accidents that I can remember. Do you remember a brutal accident where you're like, oh, man, I hope he's okay? No, I think Chase was the hardest hit. Yeah, and he bunny hopped. We really didn't have multi-car accidents. It was... But we had a lot of door-to-door racing. There was only six accidents, and I think they were all tire-related. I don't know. It was, yeah, I mean, it was we, better than Las Vegas. You on had a lot of racing, and it looked like you had 36 professionals conducting it. Now, Harvick screwed up and threw it in first gear. That's Harvick's fault. I know, but I'm just pointing out that these old-timers like him and Denny. Well, here's a question for sequentials you. Sequentials kind of got them confused. Talk about Kevin Harvick. Kevin finishes 15th yesterday. Is it time to start worrying? I mean, remember Jimmy Johnson? Even Gordon didn't win his last but, couple of years. Think about it. Jimmy Johnson won, and then all of a sudden he couldn't win again. He leaves, and the following year was last season. Hendricks went on a dominating run. After Jim, not, And I'm not saying Jimmy leaving was, you there, get was that, but I think. So at our corporate retreat, our team building exercise is walking up Stone Mountain, right? Yeah. So you're in your late 30s. I'm in my early 50s. We're walking with Alex, who's in his mid 20s. Yeah. Halfway up the mountain. Now I have an app. I look at it and go, holy crap, I can't <laughs> keep up this pace. I'm wiped out and I don't know why. Because it's less of a walk than what I do for my cardio at home. So I tell you guys, you got to go ahead. Yep. We take so off. I catch my breath and I go up the mountain at my pace. And you're like, you text me, are you all right? I just text <laughs> back, know your pace, dude. Know your pace. Yeah, and Alex took off running at the end and I'm like, nope, I'm not doing that. Not so you get slower see, as see, you age. You think? Kevin's just running his pace. Yeah, and his pace isn't good enough. So, I mean. I'll, I'll stick to that even if he wins one race. Do you think he'll win another race? I think he's got one in him, and it's done. One and done. He's done. He very well could win the All-Star race next this weekend. And that well, it doesn't it. count. I know, but I'm saying that would be the kind of crap that would happen with Kevin. He's like, the only good run of the whole season he's going to have this year is going to be a race that doesn't count, the All-Star race. Even with Tony Stewart after he won his championship, weren't you like he should have just... Hung it up. Yeah. Yeah. Because after that, he was done. That's why I admire Jimmy when he walked away. Um, Jeff walking away. You know, Jeff had a few seasons there where he wasn't winning, but he was not getting bad. there with points without wins. But yeah. yeah, well, that's when we had the Jeff Gordon fiasco, Spingate that year, and they let Jeff Gordon in. On, yeah, the let's put an extra in because yeah. he's Jeff, gentleman Jeff. Yeah, the gentleman Jeff, thirteenth place award, the Rainbow Warrior. <laughs> We're gonna let you in because we like you. Well, speaking of drivers not doing good, what about Daniel Suarez? Well, Suarez, man, I mean, look, Trackhouse has been dominating, but we can start saying now that Chastain has been dominating because all the bad luck that team's got has went to Daniel Suarez. Daniel's run good. He's fast. He just can't put it all together. Is it bad luck? Is it his team not helping him out on pit stops? Chastain seems to have that skill that's one in a hundred where he's a will man. 
So you think, I think it's a little bit of bad luck, wrong place, wrong time. And I think it's wrong place, wrong time because you're in mid-pack or farther. Chastain's not getting into the wrong place, wrong time. Chastain, when he gets in trouble, it's because he's been wrecked for the lead. Daniel Suarez is getting in trouble in 15th, 20th place when you're running around guys who get into wrecks. So Daniel Suarez, wasn't he an Xfinity champion? Yes. He's a, so we know he knows how to race. There's no doubt. He's gotten caught up in, I think the pressure's getting to him also, though. You're Should watching, some of the pressure be coming off? Now, one thing that'll happen, and you see it in business all the time, you got two teams. It's no different than we have a customer with two salespeople. Yep. And one's dominating. You, as the owner of that business, see someone doing better than someone else. Don't you put more resources to that team? I don't know if it's that. I think the resource dollar value comes from sponsorship money. I think they're, and not with this team. If it was Joe Gibbs, yes. And one thing Fox does a terrible job at, although but this, you know, this yeah. race was good, we don't have as good as coverage on pit row as we used to. No, I, yeah, I agree with so, that. But well, you go back to what you said about funding. I think with Trackhouse, it's about an organization. It's about winning as a team. It's kind of like Colleg, where it's not two different teams. It's one huge team. Well, it two is different two different teams. teams when you get down to it. But if you think about it, they're looking at it as one team, two drivers. It's... Two cars out of the same shop is how they look at it. But, yes. One's one twice and one's one zero. At the end of the day, it's two drivers. It's two drivers who compete for a living. They're going to be competitive with each other. And I'm a big fan of Daniel. So, if Daniel's so, losing to Chastain every single week and Chastain's racking up the wins and Daniel can't even finish, yeah, the pressure's going to get to him. Well, you ought to be thinking someone's breathing down my back from my seat. They're probably not either. That's the thing. But you can't not think that way. There's no way. Not as a competitor. Well, if you're not thinking yeah. that way, you're not winning. No doubt about that. And I guarantee that's got to be playing into Daniel's head in some aspect. I'm still going to go on the record saying that Daniel's going to win one this year. It's all going to... It seems to be there, like you said, in pieces. And one day, all those pieces, that puzzle's going to be done, and he's going to win. Here's the other thing I think, too, I because I agree with you. I think Daniel will win a race. I think when Daniel does win a race, the rest of the teams better watch out. Oh, yeah, because, because the hardest race to win is that first uh -huh, one. And then you start getting that yep. swagger. It's going to be over for everybody else because the pressure's off. Get your first win. Now it's just go win. Now, and now they're trophy hunting at that point. And you got and you know, Chastain. I mean, what's the most simplest rules to success? Simple and repeatable. Chastain's already done it twice. Twice. Yeah, I mean, he's him and William Byron are the only two-time winners this yeah. season. So, what about um, Eric Jones? Been fast all season. He's going to win one too. I'm thinking there might be a winner that doesn't make it into the playoffs. I I think we could be onto something there. I don't know that Eric Jones was going to win yesterday when that right rear lug nut got stuck. That was sad. Dude, it took seven laps. He lost seven laps on pit road. I mean, they had out all kind of tools over there. They had a grinding wheel. Sawzall. They ended up taking a sawzall and cutting the spokes on the wheel and pulling the Did wheel Did they at off. one point pull out a cement cutter? Yeah. What the heck, dude? They I was were, like, they were trying to cut the center lug nut so it would break, it would like break in half like a shell. I asked Jody. I said, "How many beers have I had?" She says, "We don't have any." I said, "I'm <laughs> seeing things, then. I think I'm having, I'm having a stroke. I think I'm seeing a cement cutter on pit row. Having Vietnam flashbacks. <laughs> and I wasn't at Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was insane. And I, I give a major shout out to that crew, though. Oh, yeah, they didn't that, give up. They never gave up. Dude, Press they had right. a breaker bar that was like six feet long. I was like, what the hell? They had two 280-pound <laughs> dudes jumping on that bar. <laughs> that was just crazy. No, but then finally, they took a sawzall and cut the spokes, pulled the wheel off, and then were able to break the lug nut or break the center lug. But it just seems like we're talking about center lugs a lot, and I don't like that. I don't well, think. I don't think it's... 
I mean, before the season started, we spent the whole, well, we didn't, NASCAR Sirius XM Radio spent the whole offseason complaining about what these cars are going to look like with one lug nut. They don't look any dang different to me with one lug nut or five lug nuts. They can put 12 lug nuts. It wouldn't matter Did to me. Did you watch any of F1 in Miami? No, I watched the cup race. I heard it was quite boring. Oh, I watched the replay. It, it was, was quite boring. I heard but it was. Have you seen when they do pit, pit stops? They got like this four-inch PVC tube with the air hose going down over. But they have like two guys per tire. They have the tire holder, tire changer, and the... It only takes them like three seconds. Like, well, maybe we should do that in NASCAR. I don't know. It keeps it out of the way. You got to be a little better pulling into your pit box because you got that 10-foot I, you know, honest, PVC I'm pipe. I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm not against that, actually. I've always been against it because I like the strategy of faster pit stops, but... But think about it. You're still going to have, they'll get done with the four tires. Well, we're talking about it every week. We're talking about pit crews making mistakes. I mean, this week, pit F1 road. doesn't allow you to add gasoline during the race. In NASCAR, you, well, your gas man is going to be the most important man if you got a team per tire. No doubt. Because it's going to take longer than changing the tires. But that should cut out tire, wheels falling off. I mean, yesterday you had Denny Hamlin, two inter equipment interference penalties. Kyle Busch pitting too close to the wall, got caught speeding, Kyle Larson, slow stops, losing multiple positions, Ross Chastain lost a lot of spots. His, he had a lug nut get stuck too. And then Eric Jones had his lug nut issue. So and we doing some... what you're saying would eliminate all these except speeding and driver error. But even driver error would probably be reduced because it's just hit your marks. Well, your one guy could put that nut on. Yeah. He can concentrate on that one nut. It takes, you're going to have eight people, two people per corner, a gas man. But you have to build the It's also the safer, car. though. No, have two jack men. We're talking 10 people around that car. Are they going to be faster? It'll be, it'll be three, four second pit stop. Well, no, you're going to have to wait for the gas. There's no way you can't wait for the gas. So it's still going to be 10 seconds, roughly. Yeah. But I'm okay with that because, it, like I said, it eliminates... No one will run over an air, uh, air hose. Yeah, it eliminates all these problems. Makes it safer. No more removing stuff from pit lane. No more wheels falling. Doesn't yeah. save the team it any extra money. It takes the fast... I don't know, really, I guess the pit road time's still going to matter. Yeah, so, is, except you're going to suck at six to eight Well, you have seconds. more people on, the, on pit road, too, so is it you safer? Do. Or is it really safer, then? Well, if Joey Logano is driving, nothing's safe. Joey's getting better, right? Hey, he owns it, man. He owned it this week. He didn't own it last week. No, but he's a, he was a dick this week. and He, owned he heard it. that he didn't own it during that week. So he owned it this he week. He decided to own it. He put on the black hat. Do you think we're going to have more than 16 different drivers win? Are we 13 races in? We got 13 races to go, and we so have 11 winners. Let's look at who. I'll just tell you who I think can win, who hasn't. Tyler Reddick, he can win. All right, that's one. Bubba hasn't won yet. I think that's two. He could win. I think Austin Dillon could win on a super speedway. Yeah, I mean, you got to remember we have Daytona and Atlanta still, so we have two super speedways. We have some road courses. I think Cole Custer could win. That's four. I think. Um, and I still believe Harvick's got one in him. I think Christopher Bell can win. Yes, I missed Christopher Bell completely. That's six. So. We have 11. That's 17 right there. Truax hasn't won yet. Or has he? I think he has. I think Stenhouse can win one. But that's what I mean. You got So, yeah. So, that's eight. I mean, that's seven right there. So, that's 18 different drivers. And you know what? Noah Gregson, he finished 18th. Yeah, big shout out to Noah in the 16 college racing car. I mean, he's only raced like seven cup races and he finished 18th. He could surprise. Well, very he's solid, not eligible, though, very is he? Very solid day. He's not eligible. No. But if he won one, it would screw it up for everyone else. Yeah, it takes an opportunity away. Yeah. So. I don't think Keselowski can win one. but well, I think he could pull one he out. He could win in Atlanta or... or um, Heck, he could win the last cutoff race to get into the playoffs at Daytona. I think being an owner 
has really screwed with his head. I don't. I think it's just... You think the team had fallen that down in the dumps? Well, yeah, they haven't been relevant in years, so... Well, not since... Busher finished 27th, and... Not since Carl and Biffle. So, yeah. Yeah, there's been... I think... I'm with you. I think this season we have a very good chance at seeing... Eric Almirola could win a super speedway. Yeah, I think we have a good chance at seeing more than 16 drivers, for sure. So also in other news going on, I saw where um, Chase Elliott signed on to race the SRX season finale at um, was it Sharon Speedway in Hartford, Ohio. I really can't wait till SRX is back on television. Did you like it? I liked it. It was short. It was made for television. You know those small tracks that they're running on, just like Bristol. I didn't like. I don't know. I didn't like, I did and I didn't like the cautions. So like the leaders led too many laps caution or is getting, the field's getting strung out caution. Well, I kind of like that. I was like, you know. Well, I like it because Too it's, bad. You're it's too in, good. I guess it is what it is. Like that's what it is. So I need to just like it because I liked it in the fact that it brought the cars back together, but I don't like manufactured cautions, but that's not NASCAR. It's SRX and it is manufactured cautions. So I guess I need to just get over that it's, they're different. It's different types of racing. Like we talked about in the very first episode, IMSA and NASCAR are two different styles of racing. Sports car racing and stock car, if you want to call it stock. At least it looks like a stock car. Yeah, it's two different talents. And one's road course and one yeah. is oval it's, and it's road a, it's course. two yeah. different sets of abilities. All owned by the same company. So, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I can't wait till SRX gets back. I, but, do, I like watching Chase and Bill race together. Though. That's, that's just neat to me. Wasn't IMSA great as a fan at the track? Well, I had a blast. Other than it was 23 freaking degrees outside, and we stayed at the most god-awful <laughs> hotel on the face of the earth. The Beach Crack Inn. The Beach Crack Head Inn. Oh, my God. Well, we're going back next year. Hopefully, hopefully we can get media passes for that, too. But they give you, and it reminds me of old NASCAR. IMSA gives you so much access with just the ticket. Yeah. So. But it would be cool to be able to get to the press stuff so we can talk about what, you know, that. Warm up too, if it's. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 23 exactly. degrees. But now that we, we did, you know, we started the podcast after the 24 hours of Daytona this year. That was our first episode. So next year we can have content while we're there release it on twitter you know we can release an episode from there so if we're actually have if we do get our media credentials for that race as well yeah i don't know listeners if you've noticed but our recordings have gotten a lot better we've learned (laughs) we've learned from our mistakes well we just yes i hit up matthew dillner on twitter the other day and said hey if y'all have ever thought about having like a training class or a seminar for podcasting as you know dirty mo media as a whole and he said hey that's a pretty good idea maybe maybe it'll happen that would be really cool they could charge a thousand bucks and we could write it off i didn't i was volunteering to be like a guinea pig and now you're offering to pay and that, well i didn't say that <laughs> we haven't made any money but yet. i was using myself <laughs> as an example for those other podcasters that might need a little help to be honest with you, I have no clue how we got approved for credentials, but thank you, SMI. Nice. We're going to have a blast either way. We're gonna, hopefully, y'all enjoy it, and we'll bring you some really good content. Um, and hopefully, we won't get banned from credentials for any <laughs> other races and that we're somewhat professional. What I, I'm planning on doing is we're, we're going to make we're gonna do a lot of video content, and we're going to put it out on Twitter. So if, if you follow us on Twitter, great. You'll get to see it off. If you don't, Make sure you do follow us on Twitter. It's at Car Backwards. So definitely make sure you're following along before we before the Coke 600 because we will be releasing a lot of content live. Hopefully, I mean I've heard Brett and TJ and Freddie complain about Wi-Fi and internet and cell service at these tracks. So hopefully we'll be posting stuff. Hopefully, and you know what? There is a segment that we're missing completely. My my uncle Mike up in North Carolina, he's. He's like double AARP member. <laughs> he, my mother told him that we got press credentials, and he's a big NASCAR fan. And 
I couldn't get it through his head that, no, we're not on the radio. <laughs> we're internet show, a podcast. Yeah, we're not. And he kept saying, what channel are you on? That's funny. So how do we reach those people almost 80 years old? Our website, man. You just send them a link to our website. He don't website. even know how to get on a website, but you can show he them. has a smart TV. Maybe we should start... You can get Spotify on your Videotaping TV. ourselves on YouTube. You can, get smart, you can get Spotify on a smart TV and listen to us on Spotify. Can you? Yep. I'll have to visit him to do that. Where does he live at? Asheville, North Carolina. Well, I know what Asheville hotels are like because I've stayed in one, but what I don't know is what Texas hotels are I've stayed are like. in them too, but I didn't tell Uncle Mike because <laughs> we didn't go visit him. So well, I'll say that because I know he can't listen now. We're going to Dallas, Texas for the All-Star Race next weekend, Jamie. You got any hotels or motels we shouldn't stay in for that? You know I got some hotels we can't stay at and won't stay at. I think there's some good and, ones, too, because I've seen the sheets. So. And I, once again, tried to stay away from Wyndham. I'm telling you guys, the only way I'll change my tune on Wyndham is if they sponsor us. <laughs> but until we're sponsored by Wyndham... Skip a Wyndham. Just skip a Wyndham. But this is the Century Inn Fossil Creek, and these are all near the racetrack. And this is Arthur Fisher. Is Google it? Review gave it a 1 out of 5. He said, and I'm now reading, he says, literally, the worst hotel experience I've ever had. When we checked in, the hotel clerk, Rachel, informed us we had to drive around the other side of the hotel to get to our room. When we did, we noticed that the door was locked. When we went back to tell her, she became so snotty and rude, I thought it was a prank. She said, you can't use this door. It's locked. I don't want to see you use that door again tonight. You got it? She had such an attitude. I didn't think she worked for the hotel, but was just some lady. No one in the service industry ever talks like that. We then asked where our room was, and she said we had to use the elevator. After not finding our room, we went back and asked it again, and she said, I never told you you needed to use the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> when we informed her she did, she yelled, well, do you have a witness? Like it was a court of law or something. When we asked why she was being so rude, she said, that's it, you're out. I don't like that kind of... Shit. Leave or I'm calling the police. Clearly not wanting to stay, we said we'd be happy to leave as soon as she issued our refund. She said, you're not getting a refund. Leave or I'm calling the police. At this point, there were about six other people in the lobby who could not believe this was happening. They asked the clerk to calm down and take a deep breath. She then said, I'm calm. I don't take shit from nobody. They have to leave and they don't get a refund. I asked, because we what? Talk back to you? And she said, yes. The police arrived and informed her that she had to either give us a refund or let us stay there. She then began to argue with the police saying that she didn't have to do anything she didn't want to. Finally, after the threat of arrest for theft, the clerk agreed to let her manager issue a refund in the morning. In the morning, the manager told us we'd have to get our refund through the travel booking site and made no apologies for this hotel's behavior. The police issued us an incident number and we got our refund through Expedia. I've never had anyone in my life be so rude in a customer service position. Normally, that's hyperbole. I don't, what is hyperbole? Dude, I have no clue. Is that when my Cheerios get pissed off at me and start jumping out? Hyperbole. It's a hyperbole. When a waitress forgets your soup or something, but this, oh, that goes with the Hyper Bowl. <laughs> Normally, that's Hyper Bowl when a waitress forgets your soup or something. But this was like something out of a bad novel. If someone told me this story, I wouldn't have believed it. The clerk, Rachel, screamed, yelled, cussed, and threatened to steal out of nowhere. She kicked out paying customers for talking back. There is no amount of money we're staying at this hotel. I'd rather stay in a flea-ridden roach shack I disagree. than ever go here again. Yeah, don't. 
I'd rather get type two diabetes than stay in this hotel. <laughs> well, that's that's really messed up. Yeah, no. I don't think you want that either. Yeah, I don't. Agree I don't with have that. it, but I know people that do, and it's not good. I'd rather be f flayed alive by a rusty spoon thrown into salt pit than stay at this hotel. <laughs> what? Do not ever, under any circumstances, subject yourself to this kind of torture. There are other hotels in the area. Please use any of them. All right, Karen. So basically, but Karen was also Arthur should change his name to Karen, man. Come on, that what's was, a male Karen though, Keith? Arthur. Arthur. <laughs> Art. Artie. Daryl. But this is what happens when a Karen runs into a Karen, because obviously, if the police were called, look, she, some of this went down. She had an attitude, no doubt. No doubt. The, but the worst thing about this hotel is Rachel's attitude. whoop de flippin' do I'm not going to go get diabetes, too, and... Flailed with a rusty spoon. Yeah. Why can't it be a rusty... Nobody's sticking rusty spoons scalpel. anywhere in my body. Uh, I'm not staying at a Roach Hotel. We've tried that. It doesn't work. No, it really Look, doesn't work. And this dude is... Karen, I mean, Arthur here is so dramatic, man. He's Do you like, think male Karen is a Rachel. novelist since he said it was like, Al, he was, this is very well written. Oh, yeah. He said he I read, couldn't write this good. He reads novels or something like that. Like, No, he said. What kind of math class? It's like did, I read it out of a novel. What kind of math class did he take to read novels? I mean, come on. I know, this, man. <laughs> the, Rachel screamed and yelled and cussed and threatened to steal out of nowhere. I mean, he used subjective, she, inductive verbs with adverbs and pronouns. She's the clerk. She don't care if you get a refund or not, dude. She's still making seven fifty three an hour, and she's happy about Isn't it. Isn't it wacky, though? She said, you got to go around back. And so they said the door was locked. So they come back and say, hey, the door was locked. She said, don't you ever go through that door while you're here ever again. They were. Uh, and then she sent them up a damn elevator and they didn't need an elevator. And then she came back and she said, she didn't I didn't send stairs, you up an elevator. But did, he didn't. Do have, you have a witness? He didn't have a witness to prove she said that. So we don't know that Rachel said that. Maybe she I'm is. on Rachel's side here. Are you? I'm taking Rachel's side. I mean, she didn't even care what the police said. Rachel was just like, hey. I am the queen of the Century Inn Fossil Creek Hotel. So that should tell you how old the damn hotel <laughs> is, right? It's Fossil Creek. It's like was built for the Flintstones in the Stone Age. And she's right. She don't have to do anything to police sake. Like, they can take her to jail. I mean, that's all that's fine. But she has the right. She could have stood there silent because, you know what? She has the right to remain silent. Maybe it's a shame she didn't go to jail. That would have made a better story. That would have been a better ending for the novel that author... You think the police get a little pissed Artie off? Karen wrote here. They're probably out there really? anyway. Jeez, damn. They're probably parked in that parking lot. What like was her they... name again? Damn it, Rachel's working tonight at the Century <laughs> in Fossil Creek. Hank! Oh, we hey, might as well get just... the Bronco. We're going to go sit in the parking lot at Send Century Deputy Inn. Doodad out there in the car. Just wait. Deputy Dewey. All right, where are we going next? Oh, dude, I love this guy's the name. The Deluxe Inn in Denton, because <laughs> Denton is where the track's at. It's not really in That explains Fort why Worth. this guy probably lives in Denton, but he didn't want to mess his, his name trailer is... up. The names were so good, <laughs> I put a second person in the Deluxe Inn. <laughs> Jim Boozy, <laughs> the neighborhood drunk. Oh, Jim Boozy. What did Jim Boozy Jim have to Boozy say? gave it a one out of five on Google. He attempted a late night check in. I'm sure Probably he did. because Andy and Barney weren't at the <laughs> jail for him to check himself in because he was drunk on illegal moonshine. That's what he was attempting to do here. <laughs> but he attempted a late night check in where they have something like a drive up window. <laughs> The window looked like it was shattered with many cracks throughout it. And I had to lean down and speak loudly through a slot. There's no microphone. That's what he put in brackets, guys. I'm just trying to read it the way he wrote it. After getting the room key, I headed around to the side where, where our room, <laughs> oh. R. I can, I make these mistakes, this but it's horrible when you read it. He spelled R. A-R-E. It's Texas. 
Let's say it with a draw. Where our room <laughs> is located. Let's see if I can do a Texas draw. Where yeah. our room is located no. and saw about 10 mattress boxes, <laughs> framing line and parking spots, or leaning up against the fence. <laughs> like far we, go. we found our room and immediately noticed the smell of Mary Juana. <laughs> And then the fact that there were someone's belongings <laughs> in the room. I love it. I saw several backpacks, shoes, alcohol on the shelves. The TV was on. <laughs> Beds were not made, etc. So it seems the room was actually occupied. I went back to the front office window, get me a refund, and went over to the Marriott in South Dantan off 35. The Marriott, by the way, was phenomenal and was only $120 for a large room, full kitchen, living room, and shower. I can say I'll avoid every night's in from this point forward. Why did he write now, night's in? I did a little research. Oh, okay. So, if you go look at the night's in, they got buried under bad reviews. So they changed their name. So they dropped the franchise and... The Luxon's actually a crappy franchise like Wyndham. Yeah. They was, I learned this doing my research. They probably charge $3 a check-in. You have hotel statisticals? Yeah. <laughs> Scratchy statisticals if I don't put gold bond on them. And uh, that's what happened. So they changed the franchises to he try walk, to... He walks in the room. So obviously he got somebody else's room. Right? Yeah. They gave him a duplicate key. Yeah. I mean, they're... Several backpacks. How many backpacks do you take on vacation? But you know what? Jim Boozy didn't go all Karen like the aardvark. No, he just like, hey, man. Room, it's not cool, dude. Room's occupied. Can I get my money back? I'm going to go to Marriott. Frank up at the front counter is like, hey, Jim, man, you know it's good, buddy. You go on, bud. You go on down to the Marriott, Jimmy. I'm a big believer in the Marriott. I actually have their American Express Rewards Program, the Bonvelant. I think that's how you pronounce it. You can tweet and say I'm an idiot if I didn't do it right. But we, we vacation with our points. But anyway, we stayed at a Marriott on our corporate retreat. Yeah. And I'm not going to rate it because I didn't pay for it. My, our company did. But first of all, I, I got impressed. there and they said, your room's not ready. So I was okay with that. We had meetings. So I asked if they would take my bag and put them in a closet somewhere, and they gave me a ticket. I went to about, what, what was it, three hours of planning? Something like that. So about 5 o'clock, I come back, and they said, oh, yeah, your room's ready. And they got my bag and brought it to me. So far, so good. I go down to my room, and I got to pee. <laughs> I walk in there, and there are dingleberries on the seat, and there's already urine Somebody. inside the bowl. Somebody had already pooped in your toilet. I was like, hold it now. I was thinking it was a double flusher, you know? <laughs> he was afraid to get plugged up. He flushed it and then peed in it. Or she. I don't, I'm not going to throw one gender under the bus. Someone wiped their butt, dingleberries on the seat, urine inside the bowl. So I took pictures of it. Still had not gone to the bathroom yet. I was not upset. I wear glasses and I have these alcohol cleaning, I don't know, what would you call them? Alcohol swabs made for glasses? Probably the same thing, but yeah. called a lens wipe. Lens wipe, yeah. I went up to the front counter. They were very nice. They said, do you want another room? I said, no, I'll clean it with my alcohol swabs. Everything was cool from that point on. We had a nice evening socializing with our coworkers till about one in the morning. I crawled to the bed, the room. Actually, Brad's like, you're kind of, <laughs> you're serpentine, dude. We got you. You man. got it. We I was like, you. I just bounce off. But Brad got me to my room. I crawl into bed and something is stabbing me. <laughs> Granted, <laughs> I haven't been in the room longer than 10 minutes to drop my bags <laughs> off to go to our evening social. At least it wasn't a hillbilly. It's a big toenail. <laughs> So I roll over, grab the toenail out of my leg, and throw it on the floor. Oh. Then I hit something, and it's metallic. 
on my other hip. <laughs> it's a hairpin. Now I'm thinking all they did was pull the cover back over the bed and say it was clean. Uh, there's no doubt. So then I, I scrounge around the room, find a little ottoman that you lift up and there's a blanket on it. I make the bed as the maid did. I slept on top of the cover with the, it, that was shrink wrapped or vacuum packed. I figure that was clean. That's what I slept under. <laughs> well, but man. I'm thinking this is a Marriott. This is unacceptable. Well, Jim Bougie liked it, so. I didn't care it on him though. No, you should have. I didn't even give him a review because it was a corporate trip and the trip was fine. Just the accommodations were lacking. And if anyone wants to know, it's the Marriott Stone Mountain. Well, but you won't find my review on that one. You will find it at the Beach Borough Inn. Beach Inn. What was it called? Beach Shack? I don't Beach remember. House. Beach, Beach House Inn in yeah. Daytona. You will find my not, review with pictures the. there. It's just Beach House Inn. You oh, yeah. The There's L. no V. All right. What's the next hotel you need to avoid? Well, we Texas? got Deluxe Inn again, and this guy's called Way Up There. Way Up There. Okay. I, so I'm he not. says rooms are disgusting. Bathroom floor had piss on it. That's worse than your bathroom the, floor. T <laughs> yeah, it is. There was no puddles. The TV that was in the room was a box TV from the 1960s. It didn't even turn on. Well, you know what? I don't know if I could turn on a box TV anymore from it's the a 1960s. Classic. It's, you, it, well, it probably doesn't get digital signal. Appreciate the history there, man. I called room service to maybe get another room or possibly TV, and they said, we'll be up there in five minutes. They never came in. In the middle of the night, I had a meth head banging on my door, claiming it was his room. It's just room service with your TV. Customer service was in, rude and was surprised. I didn't get scabies just sleeping there. Do not, I repeat, do not stay at the Knights Inn. Once again, it's the Knights Inn. It's been changed to the Deluxe Inn. They'll probably switch back in a little bit. Confuse How does he you. know it's a meth head banging on the door? Maybe it was room service. Maybe it was a meth head with the stolen but What TV. did your parents tell you in kindergarten to say when someone calls you something, takes one to know one? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt you. Well, that's what my well, dad said. My dad said, said hit them. Oh, my dad told me to whoop them. Yeah, that's what my dad said. Don't kill them. My dad told me to hit them. Use sticks and stones to whoop them. <laughs> but our dads were from a different age. Yeah, that's a fact. Because back in that day, the you school I went to, now bullying was just bullying. Stand up for yourself, you idiot. That's bullying. what they told you. Yeah, bullying made you a man. That's what I was told. Yeah, hit him back. Good. He's going to keep bullying until you do something to him. I was told the only way to shut up a bully was to beat him up. It worked. It did work. Yeah. I did that too. I never got bullied again. So. No, because the other bully said, holy crap, this guy will fight back. What is scabies? I looked it up, but I forgot what it was. It's like a bug. It's like... So it's a bed bug. It's a dirty bug. That's what I've always heard it was. Like, you get it from dirty stuff. See, I always thought scabies was like head lice. Well, either way, that's nasty. You don't want it. Do you know All I've right. never seen What's left? bed bugs? Yeah, that you know of. That might have been a bed bug you pointed out, the beach hell in. Yeah, but it was carrying food, so it was a big bed bug. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Clayton House Motel. And Ashante Henderson gave it a one out of five. Why now Ashante, he's pretty felt well written too. Oh, I said she, he. Like Karen, but I don't think he's a Karen. He says, let's just say that I put one star because that step was a requirement. Yeah, it's I true. Say that. It's true. You don't even have to point it out anymore, people. My fiance rented out a room for us himself. Oh, I thought Ashante was a male. <laughs> well, I'm not even going to go there. Excuse me. Keep it's just they're a couple. Our two sons and I, for himself and our two sons and I, the moment that we were about to check into our room, it was completely filthy. Does that mean it wasn't filthy until they checked in? <laughs> That's weird. There was trash everywhere. The bed was not made and then some. I... <laughs> See, that it. annoys me. I no. want to hear what the sum is. Yeah. They did come to clean it immediately, though. Yeah. Oh, well, they just screwed up their English. Yeah, that doesn't happen. All right, so I take back the well-written thing. 
My dyslexic fixed that in my head the first time I looked this over. When entering the room, there was a smell of cleanliness and soiled carpet. What, what does that mean? <laughs> I've never smelled clean, soiled carpet. The first thing we noticed was the mold on the back side of the window curtain. Dude, I would never see mold on the back side of the curtain. I don't go to the back side. Did one of their kids run back there and play hide and seek? Must have. Got mold and he said, Mommy, side. Mommy, there's black boogers on the. I got mold in my hair. What's going on? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And mommy says, You got COVID. And then her fiance says, He ain't got COVID. He's got mold spores. Told you to wear a mask. The first thing that was noticed, I already read that. <laughs> we made a complaint and they said that they would replace it the next day. They also said that they would send someone to bring toilet paper. That's the big problem. Yep. Toilet paper. That ain't mold on the back of the curtain. <laughs> yep. And we never received any. They added more mold. That's code mold. My, my went to warm my, <laughs> what the hell? My went <laughs> <laughs> to warm my kids, kids. <laughs> one and three year old, food to eat, and the microwave was sparkling on the inside as well as underneath. That usually means you threw metal in there, almost creating flames. It was reported and no one came to look at it. I would have said, hey, pull the tin foil out. Well, you're not supposed to do that. We were told that they could not refund us. <laughs> or money. O-R. Oh. <laughs> Refund us or money. <laughs> and that the owner would be available the next day, so we had to stay. Keep in mind, we spent all the money that we had to book the room. My three-year-old was so uncomfortable that he couldn't fall to sleep. He would cry and scream because he was afraid to sleep. After slipping on water that was coming from the bathroom <laughs> ceiling onto the floor outside of it. What? This lady. So it was upstairs? This lady. Like when her. I turned the light to check on him, there were several roaches crawling around under the sink. His son went under, her son went under the sink. The went to get my money back the morning after, and they charged me a $70 refund fee. How much did it cost to stay at the Retread Inn? Seventy-five dollars. <laughs> they, <laughs> you're at the Clayton House Motel, lady. They wouldn't give me a manager's number until I called the police, <laughs> which I'm not sure is really the manager. What? Is that why she called the police? She thought the police oh, was. Oh man! A... They didn't know the number to corporate. There's no corporate, and they just didn't care to be honest. Some motel. This place truly needs to be reported to the Board of Health ASAP. They don't care. Which I will be doing. They know. Oh, and let's not forget says, to get to G took my receipt and refunded to return the original copy to me. Now that's how they wrote it. I don't even know what she's trying to say. Oh, and let's not for, for, forget is F-O-R-G-W-T and then T-G-A-T. T-G-E-Y took my receipt. This is just another Karen, that's all. This is the meth head that banged on the other dude's room. Karen, that's all I see there. They had no more money because they spent it on meth at the... Of course they did. The dew drop in. Of course oh, they did. Gosh. All right, so we got an all-star race coming up this weekend, guys. Um, so we're going to do a little something a little different. Rather than doing a track info in history with Jamie like we usually do. And I hate Texas. Yeah. Track. I'm just going to go kind of run through the format of the all-star race. So Texas is a mile and a half tri-oval super speedway. 20% banking in turns one and two. 24 in is three and four. It's an asphalt track. It is owned by SMI. Their first race was 97 and it will hold 113,000 people. So... Right before the All-Star race, as always, we're going to have the NASCAR Open, the All-Star Open, whatever they're going to call it this year. It's going to consist of three stages, a 20-lap, a 20-lap, and a 10-lap stage. Each segment winner will advance to the All-Star main race, and then we'll have a fan vote that will also qualify for the All-Star race later that night. To vote for your favorite driver for the fan vote, go to NASCAR.com for details on that. 
Then after the open is over, we'll start the main event. You're gonna have four different stages. Stage one will be 25 laps. The winner of stage one will start on the pole for the final stage. As long as he finishes 15th or better in stages two and three. Stage two will be 25 laps. Stage two winner starts second in the final stage as long as he finishes 15th or better in stage three. Then there's going to be a special stage break pit competition. Each team must pit and perform a four tire stop. The team with the shortest time on pit road, pit in and pit out, wins the pit crew award and the driver will start fourth in the final stage as long as he finishes 15th or better in stages three. Stage three is 25 laps as well, and stage three winner will start third in the final stage. So the top four is gonna be figured out by stage one, two, three, and the pit road competition will be the fourth place starter. Stage one, then stage four is gonna be 50 laps, Stage one winner starts first, stage two winner starts second, stage three winner starts third, and pit stop competition winner starts fourth. If a neutral caution occur, or a natural caution occurs between laps 15 and 25 of the final stage, standard race procedures will be in effect. If no natural caution occurs during that time, NASCAR will call an all-star manufactured Competition caution, I added manufacturer. Winner of stage four wins the race and earns a million dollars. Dude, that is confusing. I'm just going to go <laughs> with whatever they say while I'm watching, because yes, it is. Man. And one thing I want to say is I hope this car fixes Texas. Texas usually is a boring race. It's been... God. I was bored with the All-Star race last year. Yeah, the All-Star race was horrible. Even the gimmicky stuff didn't make it any better. The cup race there i think this is too complicated i don't know i don't know i mean it's 25 laps 20 what's complicated is the race winner and his starting position then the pit road chat competition really people it's four stages stage one 25 laps stage two 25 laps stage three 25 laps the final stage stage four is 50 laps long whoever wins the final stage wins a million dollars plain and simple NASCAR. Shouldn't it be two million now? It's been a million forever. Inflation was like eight percent last year and eight percent this year. If Texas is paying it out though, they can probably only afford a million. Their TV don't even work right because the light bulbs are going out in it, and they can't afford to replace them. They can't afford to replace them. I'm sorry. I follow this guy on Twitter. He's had he won some free tickets from NASCAR Sammy, and he went to go to Texas Motor Speedway, called him to pick up his tickets. They've given him the runaround. It's He's been, they put that poor guy through a lot of crap just trying to get his tickets. So I hope SMI gets that figured out and gets him taken care of. I'm sure they will. But going, going to Texas, our stats, I just, I didn't do an average finish because it is an all-star race and this isn't a 400 mile or 500 mile race. It is an all-star. So I didn't do an average finish, but you got Kyle Busch. He's got four wins at Texas. Denny Hamlin's got three wins at Texas. Larson has a win at Texas. Harvick has three wins. Logano has a win. So, really, it could go anyway. I think Toyota's going to be strong. And so Chevy's going to be strong. Who's your pick to win it, even though it's not a points race? For the All Star Open, I'm going to go with Ricky Stenhouse. I think Tyler Reddick gets the fan vote. And for the overall winner, I'm going with Kyle Busch. I'm going with Austin Dillon. For the All-Star Open? He's mm -hmm. in the Open. Yep. All right. Who do you think is going to get the fan vote? Suarez. And who do you think is going to be the overall winner? Denny Hamlin. Not a bad pick. They ain't all good picks. All of them. All of them could really turn out either way. So, I, get, I obviously, we both think Toyota is going to do good. So, <laughs> All right, guys. That's all Notice I got. none of us picked a Ford. Yeah, that's not a shocker after their performance. Yeah, so. all Chevys and Toyotas to win. Should have picked Logano. Maybe he'd wreck. 
<laughs> I'm going to change my pick to Logano. <laughs> That's all I got, man. You got anything else? Nothing other than thanks to everyone that listens. You guys are awesome. Yep. We wouldn't be here. Well, we'd probably still be here, but we wouldn't be where we're going. Yeah, make sure you check us out on Spotify. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. It's at Car Backwards. And check out our website. It's racecarbackwards.com. Um, other than that, guys, thanks for listening. And have a great week. Have a good one, guys. Talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to Race Car Spelled Backwards.